Hello students, in this lecture we are going to discuss about simple harmonic oscillator in quantum mechanics. Okay? We have already seen that how to do physics with simple harmonic oscillator in classical mechanics. So let us see some previous things which we have already seen about classical mechanics. So simple harmonic motion can be approximated with the spring and the mass system. Okay, so basically this mass will oscillate and uh, it will be performing simple harmonic oscillation. So basically K is the spring constant and is the mass of this particle. Okay, and what we are approximating the force with F is equal to minus Kx. Okay, where K is the spring constant and X is basically the displacement of the particle and F is the force acting on this. We are only considering F is equal to minus Kx, no any other fictional term or the n harmonic terms. So basically this is known as a linear force. Okay, since we are taking okay, F is equal to only F is proportional to X only, not proportional to X square or X cube. Okay, because what will happen if we take this kind of terms? The complexity of the system will increase. How? Because we are generally solving a differential equation. This is nothing but a differential equation. Okay? In X. And this differential equation, if I introduce here some nonlinear terms, the complicatedness of this problem will increase. And we don't actually know how to solve those kinds of differential equations. Okay, so those kind of things come in other, another category of physics which are known as okay, which is known as nonlinear physics. Okay, so if we solve this problem, then this is basically a second order differential equation in X, and the, the solution will be something like cos omega t plus okay is term 5 where omega is basically the frequency of oscillation how this particle is oscillating and this is under proof of k by n okay. so these are few things which we already know from our knowledge of physics uh, classical physics and another thing is that so if this is the force which is a conservative force then you know that f is equal to basically minus del v by del x so if I want to find the potential energy, okay, then V of X can be found out by integrating the force and you will get V of X is equal to half K X square, where K is nothing but equal to from this equation N omega square. Okay. So basically this is the potential energy of a simple harmonic oscillator. So these are the few things which we already know about a simple harmonic oscillator and uh, we will go beyond this and how to do quantum mechanics for a problem like this. How to solve a Schrodinger equation for a simple harmonic oscillator and how to deal with the mechanics of this problem. Okay. So uh, let us start the quantum mechanical part of this problem. So as we have seen that the potential energy acting on the problem is equal to half k x square. Okay? So this is our potential energy. Now if I want to solve the time independent Schrodinger equation which is given as xi is equal to e psi. Okay? So this is your Hamiltonian operator, this is your wave function, this is your energy eigenvalue and this is your wave function again. Okay? Now this Hamiltonian operator is basically the summation of the kinetic energy and the potential energy Okay, if there are non-linear terms, okay, it is not always a summation of kinetic energy plus potential energy, but in some simple cases, this can be approximated as the total energy. Although this represents as the uh, total energy for time-independent case. So basically, here we are having psi, which is time-independent. Psi is only the function of position. Okay, it is not a function of time. Okay, right now, and the Hamiltonian is also you will see. independent. So Hamiltonian is also not 
depending on time. Okay, so always remember that if Hamiltonian is time independent, then you can write it as a total energy. Okay, so here in quantum mechanics, momentum is not generally a number but an operator, and the position is also an operator, not a number. Okay, and these operators in quantum mechanics are generally matrices. We will see later what it means. So this momentum operator in quantum mechanics can be written like minus I H cross del by del x. Okay. So we have this thing because so this Hamiltonian operator can be written as minus h cross square by 2m d square by d x square plus half k x square and x is an operator always a number of this okay so this is the thing and now let us solve the Schrodinger equation for the problem okay. So, as we know that the time independent Schrodinger equation is given like this. So, plugging here the Hamiltonian of our system, here we have minus h x square by 2m d square by d x square which operates on psi plus half k x square, not k square, yes, okay, half k x square into psi is equal to e psi, okay. So this is the term which we have. So this can be written as d square psi by dx square plus 2m by x square square e minus half a x square psi is equal to 0. Okay. So, this is how our Schrodinger equation looks like. Okay. So, this is your Schrodinger equation and uh, we have to solve this differential equation. Okay. So, let us do some change of variables. Let us do some change of variables here. So, let me approximate or let me rescale, uh, let me introduce a variable xi which is equal to under root of n omega by h cross into x. Okay. And the another variable, okay, which is basically lambda which is equal to 2 e by h square omega. Okay. So, these are the two variables which we are introducing in the problem. Okay. So, once we introduce, here you can see that what I am doing is that I am rescaling my value of position with psi. So, basically now you can see that xi is proportional to x. Okay. So, instead of x in this whole problem, you will be seeing terms of psi. Okay. So, psi X has, x has now been replaced with slide. Okay, always remember this. So, after doing this, you can see that So, psi which was a function of x is now changed to a function of xi. Okay. So, how to deal with this differential? Let us see. So, we are having uh, d square psi by dx square and this can be written as d psi uh, d by dx of uh, d psi by dx and uh, this can be written as using chain rule d by dx into d psi by d psi and d psi by dx. Okay. And 
this term can be written as again in terms of k to d by d z into d z by d x and this is d z by d z into d x by d x. So uh, this is now equal to d square psi by d z square. Okay, and this is d psi by d x. So this is the term, and you know that z is nothing but this thing. So from here you can see that d psi by d x, d z by d x is equal to under root of m omega by h cross. So z cross. d psi by d psi by d x square is equal to m omega by h cross. Okay, so this is equal to m omega by h cross into d square psi by d psi square. Where psi is now a function of psi. Okay, not a function of x because we have these two variables. So this is the value of d square psi by d x square in terms of this thing. So remember this identity, okay? And this change of variables, okay? So once you plug in this change of variables, okay? So if I call this equation number one, okay? If I call this two and this three, okay? And this as four, okay? Then plug in. Two, three, and four in one. Let him two, three, and four in equation number one. We will get z double prime. Okay, plus lambda minus z square. Into psi is equal to zero. Okay, so this is the term which uh, this is the equation which you will get. And here psi double prime is equal to d square psi by d z square. Okay. So this is the thing, uh, and uh, this is where we have reduced the equation to. So let me call this as equation number five. Okay. Now. What we will do is, first of all, we will find. So this is again a Schrodinger equation, or sorry, a differential equation. It is also a Schrodinger equation. So basically, now we have to solve this differential equation. Okay. So first of all, what we will do is, we will find the asymptotic solution. Of equation number five. Okay. So basically, what uh, I mean by this is that I want to first of all find the value of psi at plus and minus infinity. Why? For a wave, well-behaved wave function, what I want that psi at plus or minus infinity should tend to zero. This is a basic fundamental of quantum mechanics. If this is not satisfied, then a lot of problems can be there. Okay, the first problem is that you can't expect your probability density because psi square is your probability density. So if psi is increasing, psi square will also increase. And uh, beyond the region of interest, if your probability of finding the particle is increasing, then there is no meaning of doing all these things. So basically, we confine ourselves to the region of interest. Okay, in quantum mechanics, and that's why we want this kind of solutions. What I mean by this is that a particle should be localized in the region of interest. Okay, so uh, at psi at plus minus infinity, it should tend to zero. So let us see what happens. So at x is equal to plus or minus infinity. So since we have replaced our x with psi, so what will happen here?
Okay. As line tends to infinity, okay, we can neglect this lambda from this equation since xi is very large. So your equation will reduce to psi double prime minus psi square into psi is equal to zero. Okay. So this is our, our equation, and uh, we have to find, and this actually corresponds to the limit where psi at infinity. Okay. So we will write the subscript infinity. Okay. For this psi, and if you will solve this equation, you will get. A term like this, so psi infinity will be the constant c1 e to the power minus half psi square plus c2 e to the power minus half, okay, plus e to the power half psi square. So you can see that this is exponentially decreasing solution. And this is exactly opposite. Okay, exponentially increasing. Now, what do you want? At psi tends to infinity, you want your psi to go to zero. So this term will help you. This term will not help you. So basically, what we will set? Set c two is equal to zero. Because we don't want an exponentially increasing solution at x tends to infinity, okay. So this is totally ruled out, okay. So what is the valid wave function at infinity possible? Okay, since we don't don't know c one, I will write approximate solution like this. So this is the value of a. This is the acceptable wave function at psi equal to infinity. But this is not the wave function which is valid everywhere. This is the wave function which is valid at psi equal to at x is equal to infinity. Okay, not everywhere. So we want to write a general wave function. So how can a general wave function be written? Okay. So so the general Wave function, okay, which is valid everywhere, not only at infinity, okay, which should be valid at infinity also, and which should be valid at all other points also. So we approximately write, okay, the solution like this: sine, okay, which is the value of wave function everywhere, is equal to u. With, this is a function u into e to the power minus half. Sorry, let me first write this in the form. U into sine infinity. Okay, so sine can be written as u into e to the power minus half sine square. Okay. So this is the thing, and uh, we will try to. Uh, use this equation and find uh, the value of u. Okay, since we have just taken a function u, but how will this function look like? We don't know. Okay, so uh, we are getting our equation. Okay, which is our general equation, equation number five. So from five, we are getting. Psi double prime plus lambda minus psi square into psi is equal to zero. Okay, so this is the equation number five, and I am plugging this kind of equation, this kind of okay, uh, equation uh, solution. Okay, let me call this as six. So plugging. Six 
in equation number 5, what you will get? Okay. So, what you will get is, so here you have to write the psi, okay, psi is this thing. So, okay. u is a sum function of xi itself, okay. so u into e to the power minus half xi square, I have to take the double derivative of this thing plus lambda minus xi square into this term again u into e to the power minus half xi square okay is equal to zero okay so i have to first of all find this term so if you do this then this thing will be like this u double prime minus 2z u prime plus xi square minus 1 into u okay and e to the power minus 1 by 2 xi square will be common so this is the value of this term okay and i will add also this term so this will be lambda minus 1 okay into u into e to the power minus half xi square is equal to 0 Okay, so you can see that in both of these terms, this e to the power minus half xi square is common and equating the coefficients of e to the power minus half xi square to be 0, then you will get the term like this, u double prime minus 2z u prime plus lambda minus 1 into u is equal to 0. Okay, so this is the differential equation. So this is how this equation has been reduced and let me call this as equation number 7. Okay, so this is your equation number 7 and I have to find the solutions of equation number 7. So what I will do is, I will be using power series method okay. so what we do in power series method we approximate the solution which is your the solution of this equation is u so u is a power series so i am writing u is equal to summation of k is equal to 0 dk into z to the power k. Okay. So I am using this thing okay, as a solution of equation number 8. Okay. So what I will do, I will plug in equation number 8 in equation number 7 and I will find out that how the solution comes. So first of all what I have to do is I have to find the value of u double prime, u prime and u is u can be plugged as it is. Okay, so as we have seen that u can be written as summation of k is equal to 0 dk xi to the power k. So u prime can be written as This can be written like this, and uh, <coughs> u double prime can be written as okay. So this is the thing which we have now. <coughs> now this k is nothing but a dummy variable. And you can change it according to your convenience. So what I am doing is, I am changing k to k plus 2, okay, in this equation. So 
So what will happen? U double prime is equal to summation of A is equal to zero. Okay. B of A plus two. <coughs> K plus two. This K minus one is built up to K plus one, and this z is built up to the z to the power K. Okay. So this is the value of u double prime, and this uh, similarly, uh, this u prime can also be changed. So here, what I will do, I will change the value of k to k plus one. So your u prime will be equal to k is equal to zero. B of k plus one. No, sorry, no need for doing this. Okay. Uh, we will not do this. The reason behind this, uh, we will be shown just now. So we have this thing with us. So now we have the value of u double prime with us. We have the value of u prime with us, and now we have to plug this in the equation u double prime minus two z u prime plus lambda minus one into u is equal to zero. Okay. So we have this thing. And now we have calculated the value of u double prime. We have the value of u prime and the value of u. Okay. So uh, if I take this and first of all, if I calculate the value of two z into u prime, then this will turn out to be is equal to zero. Multiplied with this term, so now I have z to the power k. So now uh, I have the value of two z u prime, and the value of u can be uh, put uh, in the normal way. So you will get uh, this equation will now look out like this. Summation of k is equal to zero. k plus one, k plus two, okay. B to k plus two, z to the power k minus two k. k is equal to zero. Z k b k. Plus lambda minus one into k is equal to zero. Okay, is like b k equal to zero. So we have this thing, and uh, what we can do is we can take the summation common. We can take z to the power k common, and we can uh, take the coefficients of z to the power k equal to zero. So Equating coefficients of the side to the power k to zero, you will get the recurrence relation. This is 
an important result. What you can see is, if I take k is equal to 0, okay, then I will get uh, b2, okay, but I cannot get b1, okay. So, if I take the value of k e1 initially, then or basically the coefficient e1 like b0 or b2, then all the coefficients, coefficients which I will get will be only e1. If I take this as an odd, then all the terms which I will get is odd. Okay? What is the reason behind this? We will see this. Why this is correct and why should why we should get result like this? This is important. Okay. So this is the value of coefficients which we can get. Now, uh, so this is an important result and so we have got from the recurrence relation. So this is the value of uh, the coefficient which we have got and uh, as we know that uh, uh, the wave function uh, should at some point the coefficient of the wave function which is basically the bk okay, should reduce uh, should be reduced to 0. So how can this uh, be seen? Okay. So basically we have to find some upper cap on this value of k. Okay. So this k max value Okay. If I approximate this with the value n, then then plus one minus one by is equal to zero, and two n plus one is equal to lambda. Okay. If I put the value of lambda, okay, which was uh, two e by h square omega, so we have taken lambda is equal to two e, okay, by h per omega, okay, then, okay, e h per omega is equal to 2n plus 1, okay, and e you will get is equal to n plus 1 by 2 h per omega. This is a very very important result of physics, not only quantum physics but in various fields of physics. Okay? And uh, this you can see that the energy is basically depending on the value of n. So this is the energy eigen spectrum. simple harmonic oscillator in quantum mechanics and the result is different from classical mechanics. Okay. You can see that you what you are getting is for ground state energy. Okay. The value of n can vary from 0 okay, to 1 to like this. Okay. It should be an integer and the minimum value of n which is possible is 0. Okay, so for E0, so the minimum value of n corresponds to the ground state energy and this is equal to half h per omega. This is also a very important result of physics. This is known as zero point energy. Okay. So you can see that there is also in the ground state a minimum possible minimum finite energy which is there. Okay? And this is again a very important result. So you can see that for different different values of n, you will get equally spaced lines. Okay, so this corresponds to n is equal to 0 and this is equal to half h per omega or n is equal to 1, you will get 3 by 2 h per omega, 5 by 2 h per omega. And you can see that the difference between 
each level okay is constant okay so this are the important results so today in this lecture we have derived the energy eigen spectrum for a simple harmonic oscillator in quantum mechanics we will see more features in the coming lecture of a quantum harmonic oscillator